Hi, I'm Sarah E. Morin, and I write unruly fairy tales. And I'd like to share with you a poem I wrote called Rapunzel the Hairbrained. Rapunzel, locked up in her tower, combed her long hair by the hour. Her beauty rare, her figure lush, her main companions comb and brush, and of course the witch, who they tell us was a mother overzealous to guard her child from the world, preferred to keep her groomed and curled, safe above all human touch, save her own, so as such, her daughter learned no useful trade, but how to crimp and primp and braid. One more skill Rapunzel had her profession of a human ladder, but no great purpose, no true friends, just a bounty of split ends. She considered every angle of every knot and every tangle but feared to speak with words too candid how her hair had left her stranded. Perhaps she seemed unassuming, but she knew enough of grooming to pin down a passing prince with fair hair and subtle hints. And luckily, he didn't care if his sweetheart only spoke of hair. The sweet nothings they exchanged were how to pin up and arrange. The witch, of course, was much offended when down long hair the prince descended. She ignored Rapunzel's tears, dug in the drawer for rusty shears, hacked off her hair with a snip, 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 and sent the girl on a one-way trip, and took the hair that she had shorn and took the prince into some thorns. And though they say the prince was blind, it didn't take him long to find Rapunzel with her brand new bob who cured his blindness with a sob. Home returned the brave prince errant, for he was the heir apparent, and set new bride in new station, learning how to rule the nation. But Rapunzel had no particular knack for things that weren't follicular. She failed at manners, failed at speech. No matter how hard her tutors did teach, raised only to value hair she didn't know and didn't care to master any other trade but how her kofir was displayed. The prince, he didn't dare complain. He'd picked his bride for a length of mane. Behind their backs, the whole court talked and cursed the day the tower came unlocked. Though, as a ruler, she was appalling. In due time, she found her calling and became a great practitioner of shampoo, dye, and fine conditioner. She befriended other princesses by styling their noble tresses. She never became a politician, but became the royal beautician and bound the kingdom's wounds and woes in ribbons, flowers, pins, and bows. Instead of a queenly vocation, she found her use in decoration Hair, they say, is woman's glory. Is that the moral of the story?